Hello, my dear friends, fellow traveler and photographer. Welcome to Chris Lee Travel Channel. Today, I will bring you to my third episode of my journey to Sichuan. And it will be another very interesting uh, journey. And I wish that you can stay tuned until the end of the day because I'm going to share with you quite a number of places. Now, first of all, we are still remain in the prefectures, the Gansi prefectures, but we are moving more toward now to the, the eastern and the northeastern section, right? And uh, we have actually visited in our second episode the the Tao uh, Tao Chen Ya Ting, the very scenic uh, park, natural park. And now we are on the way back. So while on the returning journey, we will cover half of our journey during the day one. And we stop at the town known as Xing Du Chao. It's from this point, the, the second red, red dot that you see in this map, that we will then tee off from the, the so-called the National Road or National Highway G318 we tee off moving northward. So our journey for today will be basically covered between these two red dots that's from the Sing Tu Chiao all the way upward until we reach Dan Ba. But we will not going to cover Dan Ba today but it's where our ending point and in the fourth episode we will then continue our journey from Dan Ba onwards. So what I'm going to share with you today uh, will cover not only a uh, very scenic uh, landscapes around these regions, but we also will be, as a scene from this image, we are going to cover also a uh, few monasteries. One of them uh, is Kuri uh, Monastery, which is right at the Sintu Chao regions. And then along the way, we also found some very interesting Tibetan uh, culture and religions, the, the belief, which they do a lot of painting on the rocks that found on the roadside as well as on the rivers. And we also covered this very famous Tangong Monastery, and uh, one of the oldest, uh, so-called, also very famous monastery in this region. And we also covered the third one, is called Huiyan Monastery. And this picture of Huiyan Monastery that we visited was during the year 2015. And during our visit was still under expansion and there are some major constructions. So I believe for those visitors that are visiting recently, we will definitely will not able to see the image that I'm sharing with you. Because these are the old monastery before uh, I believe they have not torn down, but then they have actually have built a much bigger one and most visitors will be actually channeled to the new uh, monastery building. And then along the way, we still cover a lot more very beautiful scenery before we end our journey in Tanba. So let's begin our journey from this Sing Tu Chao. Now, Sing Tu Chao is a picture squad small town right on a crossroad of National Highway, the quite G318, between the Kangding and the Tango grassland. Now it's located at an altitude of about 3,300 meters above sea level and is about 78 kilometers west of Kangding city. It's been reported as a world, uh, a world, a world of uh, light and shadow and also a paradise for photographers. Now, at an altitude of 3,300 meters, Sing Tu Chao belongs to the typical plateau climates with distinct temperature difference between the days and night. Now, Sing Tu Chao has an average temperature of around 7 degrees Celsius and the hottest month fall on July and August, which has an average temperature of about 15 degrees Celsius. And the coldest month, of course, is in January during the winter month with an average temperature of around 2.5 degrees Celsius. That means that it's still much, very much comfortable. All right? Now, 
this romantic city counting right, from this along the national highway the G3 and 8 right user refer to as you drive along this right between the 10 kilometer stretch of the route itself it's been regarded as one of the most beautiful scenery uh, roads along this G318 highway. Now, the, uh, it's important to note that the well-known photography sites are not in the town of Xingdu Chiao, but on the road between this Zetu Mountain and Xingdu Chiao, which uh, stretch about 10 km in length. And some of my friends ask me what's the best time to visit Sintu Chao. And uh, I would recommend that uh, it's from late May till the early November, or more correctly to say that during the uh, autumn season. Now, the June is a spring of Sintu Chao, uh, with different uh, wildflower blossom all over the farmland, right? And uh, when October comes, it entered into the most beautiful season of Sinto Chao as been regarded as uh, and uh, you will then realize that the gender sun and the shining on the vast grassland give you a picture squad uh, images at all corners so photographer is free to walk around to explore Sinto Chao to get the best catch so from here, I'm going to share with you some of the images that I've captured while I'm uh, at Sintu Chao. So we are now at the spot number seven, right? And it's a, inter uh, it's a junction. You can see that it's a junction where we start tee off, right, from the highway G318. So these are the scenery that you can find in Sintu Chao. As the visit is during the autumn, as I did mention that that, that was in the year 2015, and uh, you can so you can see that you expect the, the surrounding area, the trees, uh, the tree leaf have started turning into goldish in color. So about the uh, after exploring the Sintu Chao, and of course uh, we are going to bring you to a monastery that located between the Sintu Chao uh, town. You can see from the image, it tree uh, is a cloudless uh, day, and uh, but the weather is very cooling when you uh, travel to this part of the world during the autumn season. And while we were in Sintu Chao, we also have a chance to visit one of the local uh, Tibetan uh, family homes. And uh, just this uh, image, uh, the capture, you know, is a kitchen. And we have a nice tea uh, drinking section at this house. So now we, we bring you to this Chili uh, uh, Monastery. 
Now the Jiri Monastery or Jiri Temple is the nearest ancient temple located up on a hill that's still only a few kilometers away from the village of Jiri and in Singtu Chao. And it's about uh, 15 kilometers in the south. It belongs to the set of the Geluk or the Yellow Hack. We call them Yellow Hack, you know, for easy recognition. This ancient temple, right, is with a long history dating back to more than 1,400 years. And the old temple was originally located on the Mount Zidu, Mao Zidu, right? Then uh, moved here uh, more than 600 years ago and uh, is the most prestigious right, Lama temple in this region. Now, Jili Monastery is also served as the teaching and learning center of Tibetan Buddhism. Now, this temple uh, is have 47 kampo and three rinpoche in history and have stored a large number of Ganjo Tibetan scripture and in handwritten form, right? And basically all are manuscripts. Now the Tibetan art as well as the relics, wall painting as well as many other priceless collection can be found in this temple. Uh, of course our visit we don't really uh, enter to the temple building because we were told that Almost all of the monastery in uh, China, or particularly in Tibet and Sichuan regions, that photography is not allowed. So it, it doesn't attract me to take picture because I can't take picture anyway. So I would prefer to spend most of my time outside the temple, roaming around to enjoy the scenery. So from here, you can see that most of the images that I'm sharing with you are the surrounding scene of this monastery. And then the outside and at the rear of this monastery, up on the hill, they locate a so-called sky bearer platform. And it's very, very f rare and very few, and uh, which is still in use. Uh, visiting, of course, is prohibited. And uh, this is what we told. And of course, during our visits, uh, there's no uh, a bearer uh, ceremony being performed. Uh, so we just enjoy the scenery of this old 1400 years of course the building is only about 600 old years because they just shifted 600 years ago to this this location so this entrance view of this monastery nothing to shout but uh, you were quite impressed uh, with the uh, architectures Typically, most of monasteries in these regions, the external wall, are painted in white, while the window frames are painted in the dark reddish color. And this monastery also have a quite a big courtyard, you know, or between. Uh, the monastery and you can see there's a lot of stupa you know was well lined up so these are some of the uh, view of the construction of this monastery and uh, at the roof level I will also consider this also one of the very beautiful monastery, uh, although uh, not as outstanding as compared with some other monastery in this region, but definitely it's worth a visit, you know.
So now we move on from this uh, Sing Tu Chao, and we are going to move on to midway between uh, uh, Pai Mei, because we, we are supposed to uh, visit Pai Mei as well. So in between Sing Tu Chao and Pai Mei, at the middle of the journey, there's a place called Tang Go. Tang, Tang, Ta Gong, Ta Gong, Ta Gong. So this uh, Ta Gong in Mandarin, so this Ta Gong is actually a village, a village or a small town. And right at this Ta Gong uh, village or small town, there is popular for one monastery, it's another very popular monastery, and also there's a very beautiful grassland just around it, right? So uh, we are moving, and along the journey, why we are traveling from Singtu uh, Chao to Ta Gong, and uh, on our left hand side, as you're moving northward, uh, on the left hand side, there's a river, and on this river, as you get close to this Ta Gong uh, town, you found that the on the river the stone are all been painted with uh, inscription, Tibetan inscription. As can be seen in this image. And right on the hill, all the exposed rock surface are also been painted with inscriptions. It's just an eye uh, catching uh, uh, in this stretch of the road. Because Tagong has been regarded as one of the holy places uh, for the local Tibetan. Uh, Multicolored flat is everywhere. So finally, we arrive at this Tagong uh, town, a small town, <coughs> and uh, of course, our intention is to visit the Tagong uh, monastery, the grassland around it, you know, and uh, if possible, we also have a stroll around in this Tagong town. So now we are. At at Tagong now, and uh, as we close, come close to Tagong down, as usual, you found that all the hills around this region have been decorated with um, multicolored flags. And uh, in the town, in the town itself, you you also notice that the the building architecture is very, very uh, outstanding and very, uh, uh, the color is very vivid and very beautiful. This is some of the uh, main entrance, the front entrance of the shop lots. We were there quite early in the morning, and uh, you notice that, that the most of shop are not open as yet. And we spot this uh, uh, interesting uh, device. It's using the solar energy to boil water. You can see the kettle at the top, and then using this metal reflective uh, plates on both sides. The slightly curved in a manner, they will then position it in a in a way in a direction that they point toward the sun. We also have found some artisans on the street doing some form of repair of the roof or gutter. So now let have a look at this Tagong Monastery. Now Tagong Monastery is also known as a small Jokhan temple or Hagong Temple. There are many, many names, right? But in Chinese, it's called Ta Gong. Now, it's belonging to the Sakya Set or 
which is actually uh, 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 there are so many different uh, sect in this Tibetan uh, Buddhism. So Sakya sect is one of them, or in Chinese call them Hua Jiao. Uh, with a history of over 1,000 years, it is uh, built right at the heart of the town, right? The main right of this uh, Tagong town, and it was during the Qing Dynasty. And uh, what is important to note that uh, this Tagong monastery is already have more than 1,000 years old, right? And at the rear of this monastery, they house rows of stupa, close to 100 of them, I was told, and in better size and shape, right? And from the monastery, one can enjoy the harmony scene and the numerous yak and sheep that grazing on the fertile grassland nearby. And uh, each year, it's important to note that if you're interested to join in a festival, there's a major three-day a Buddha event that held in this Tagong uh, monastery, which at the end of June, right? And uh, you can participate in this temple activity, right? Including meditations and uh, daily circumambulations, right? Anyway, uh, let's have look into the image and to get a better view of the surrounding. And in the image, uh, you can see uh, some backdrop is actually a mountain range. And at the far end, there's a mountain peak. And this mountain peak is called Yala Mountains, right? And we at the height of 5,884 meters, right? So this is the entrance view of this uh, Tagong Monastery. The roof, the golden roof, very popular and very famous. And at the back of it is the Yala Mountain. The near 100 stupa, row and row of them. And of course, when you visit Tagong Monastery, uh, you also be just all together visiting the Tagong Grassland, which is next to the Tagong Monastery. And uh, important to note that this Tagong Grassland is a vast uh, expanse of merdu covering an area of about 713 square kilometer, quite a big grassland, and is also uh, at, located at a high altitude of about 3,900 meters above sea level. And this beautiful grassland are home to Tibetan Norman uh, that grazing their herds and yak and living in a traditional black yak wood tents. Of course, it's getting less and less. Right? And of course, the important thing is that at this grassland, you also want to view this beautiful Mount Yala or Yala Mountains, right? Performing the backdrop, which can be seen in my earliest image. So you can see the grassland, uh, one section of grassland, and and uh, there have been some fence up of this grassland, and um, for us as a visitor to enter, they charge us a very nominal fees. You see the row of a stupa, the, the surrounding the monastery in this image. Color flat is the uh, normal or uh, typical phenomena or view you can find in uh, Tibetan regions. So at the bank is the monastery, and further at the bank is actually the Mount Yala. And we found quite a number of Tibetan family. They, they, they spend their time here having a picnic in, uh, on the grassland. 
And we move on after touring the Tagong grassland. We move on. And uh, we are on the way to Pame, right? uh, uh, another beautiful town. So from this image, you can see that Park May is again halfway through of our journey for today because our the last stop today will be Danpa, right? And why traveling to Tame, not far from Tame, the, 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 this small town? And we will bring to this uh, interesting spot. They call it the Moshi Garden, right? But before that, let's have some idea what the town is about. Now, Palme uh, is a small town located in uh, Daofu County, right? Which is about 78 kilometers from the Daofu town in the Gawa Tibetan Qing Monastery, right? Autonomous prefectures. Now, so in other words, we are moving away from the Gansi prefecture, we are going to a new prefecture in our next episode. <coughs> now, Tame, this town is about 3,500 meters above sea level and uh, it is actually a popular tourist destination in northwest Sichuan. Now, among the attractions in Palme are the Palme grassland which I'm going to share with the image later on. I was very impressed and very happy with the image I've taken in this palm uh, grassland. Then they also in a very scenic landscape, uh, unique landscapes uh, region called them uh, Mersi Gungyan or Mersi Garden Scenic Area. Then they also have a uh, very popular uh, monastery called Huiyan Monastery. So we are going to cover all these three places while we are in Palme. So now we are in a stop, uh, our stop number eight. And first of all, this Me Si Gong Yuan, right? Uh, as can be seen in this image, at the center spot of this image, you can see some rocks outcrop. And this rock outcrop give you a color of black blackish in colors and it is because it's colored in black so the Chinese call them me si, a kind of a uh, stone that they use it for calligraphy right so uh, and it's very unique <coughs> in this region and just very unique and uh, it's for this reason it also attract a lot of visitors So let's look at this so-called Mosi Garden Scenic Area. So it's actually located at the bank of the highway, right, from Daofu to Kangding, which is about 20 km northwest of Tango Grassland, which is not far from just now the last stop we have. And it's about 3,500 meters again above sea level. Remember, we are now still in Qinghai Tibetan Plateau, right? And this spectacular uh, stone forest, which featuring its unique uh, geographical landform, and they have some sort of like pagoda light stone outcrops in their own special shape and posture, right? And because of the color is in black, it is then be known as a Mosi Garden Scenic Area. And Mosi <coughs> in Chinese imply ink like black colors of the stone forest. This astonishing uh, stone forest landscape was formed after thousands of years of geographical movement and weathering. And the park was honored with a national 4A level tourist attraction by the Chinese. National Tourism Board. Now, with the contrast of the surrounding vast grassland, right, and also the snow-capped mountain nearby, the site is again a picture called sky uh, for photographer. But our stop is very, very short because we are on the way to Palme and we just stopped by at far distance, we captured some of the images. 
But of course, you can find if some visitor photographer can go walk close, right? Walk near and visit. So this is uh, a few more images of this uh, uh, Moss 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 right Garden Sydney area. You can see the yard is uh, on the hill slope. <coughs> Why we in the bar, mate? I and um, we are. Our next destination will be the monastery. And uh, before we are arriving at the monastery, we stop at the junction, a root junction. And at this root junction, we found that there's a group of pagoda. And uh, been claimed to have more than 300 number of them, right? And uh, I'm gonna actually locate the ancient name of this pagoda, the Greek group of pagoda. But I find it very, very interesting. So I would like to share with you. And beside this pagoda, again, there is actually a very huge prayer view. And this prayer view was so large that they are giving the name, uh, this prayer view, the lucky prayer view. right? And uh, later on, we will see the image of this prayer view. <coughs> So we are now in Pame, the town, a small township. And this is a juncture, this is a root junction I'm referring to. You can see that on the right, you go further up, we're gonna visit the famous monastery that I mentioned to you just now. And they are this they're giving a name called Taling, Pagoda Forest, but to me is this a general name, so I couldn't find any specific name been given you know for this group of pagoda in this region but anyway it's a very interesting site and this is the tallest and the largest pagoda or tower some people like to call it it look very much different from the other surrounding pagoda. And here is a signboard uh, sharing, telling us the direction. On the right, we're going to the pagoda forest. On the left, we're going to a lucky uh, prayer view uh, area. And uh, it's important to note, uh, next to this pagoda and uh, as well as this uh, prayer view, it actually is a Lama Suri or some people may call it monastery. But again, I couldn't find the name uh, of this monastery and it actually was a teaching a learning center of Tibetan Buddhism. You can see the monk. Right, is uh, walking out from after their class. So <coughs> inside, this are <coughs> some of the prayer view. This is not the biggest one. There's another one, very much bigger one, but unfortunately, I I misplayed the image. It's huge, so huge that you need eight person to be able to turn it. So in Pame, of course, our next stop will be this Hui Yan Monastery. Now, it's important to note that, that the, uh, this Hui Yan uh, Monastery is also called the uh, Gata Kote in Tibetan language. And uh, it's also been located at the elevation of 3,550 meters above sea level in Taofu County in the Gansi Tibetan Autonomous Prefectures. So it's one of the most famous and massive uh, attraction when visiting Gansi regions. So you can see from the art itself, you can see that the year 
the aging of this monastery, right? And again, it's been dated to the uh, Qing dynasty. Now, the Huiyan Temple was built in the year uh, in 1729, which is about 13 kilometers away from the Pame Stone Forest, which, which I shared with you now, just now, and about 110 kilometers away from the county seat, the Taofu, which is actually further north, right? Now, Huiyan Temple had close connection with the Gansi local attractions. This temple had gone through three times of so-called uh, construction. Currently, this temple had become more magnificent and gorgeous, both in terms of skill and decoration. During a visit in the year 2015, this temple still undergo major construction and expansion. And of course, what the image I share with you will not be what you see currently in China. But just to share with you what the current status of this uh, monastery. Now we cover an area of approximately 50,000 square meter and have more than right, 1,000 Hmong chamber. Now the temple was encircled by three walls uh, from the inside to the outside, right? And the temple have a main building like memorial archway, screen wall, gate, prayer hall, right? Buddhist college, uh, monastic reception, and many more. So you can see the gigantic size, the huge size of, of this uh, temple or monastery. It also have a wide courtyard, right? And the elaborated layout a temple with outstanding local features and in the artistic classic of the Kham area. So it's a must visit. Of course, our visit, we miss all this because it's still under construction. <coughs> so therefore, the Huiyan uh, temple, besides being best known for its grand buildings, as I share with you, their collection of the cultural reliefs and the historical stones State, state, states right, in Tibetan, Chinese, and Manchu language are also the crowd puller. But I will visit again as usual. We do not focus on the internal and all this historical beliefs. We are more again emphasize on the architecture and the surrounding. So this temple is also one of the main site for prayer all right, and chanting and sutra chanting and worship in the Sichuan area. So if you are lucky during a visit, you can even coincide with one of the chanting sessions. So uh, I was told currently there are around 208 monks right, live in this temple. Right? So uh, let's see uh, what we can find more on this temple. This temple is, this morning is so important because it's been said that even the seven Dalai Lama was lived here. And, and it's so important that people regarded this as one of the most holy Tibetan temple in these regions. So let's see some of these images. Right, this is some of the uh, sign uh, outside the temple. So in Chinese name, you know, it, it sounds differently. This is old temple, um, home monastery buildings. A bit unique uh, and different is instead the wall is painted in white. You can see the wall is painted of different color on the front facade. But well, on the side and the back, they paint it white. So these are the stupa that. Uh, that at the back of this temple. And you can see the mountain at the far end. 
And here, you see, this is uh, actually in, during the year 2015, and during our visit, you can see that the scale of construction that have been taking place while during our visit. This is only one section of the construction uh, that took place. And you can see that this is just a, a, a wider view of it. And it's just taking one corner of it. And you can imagine symmetrically here, the other side will have the same skills. You can see how huge is this completed monastery, which you're going to see if you visit now in China. So after moving from this monastery, we go further to our next stop, all right? And of course, our next stop will be going through this part of grassland, as I mentioned just now. It's one of the very scenic spots that I have come across during my visit in, to Sichuan. I like all this image, uh, images very much. Uh, it's very, very uh, scenic in my personal opinion. Blue sky uh, with some crowd, white crowd. It make all, every image, images uh, very much stand out. The whole hill or mountain nearby are fully covered with golden uh, leaf on trees that fully turn golden, goldish color. So after we enjoy the beautiful scenery along the way from this uh, uh, Park May all the way to Danpa, and uh, we are now ended in this Danpa at the point mark nine. And I will share with you more about the, my travel journey uh, in the episode number four, commencing from Danpa, which again is very, very scenic, very unique uh, town, township, and with a lot of surprise to be shared with. So please stay tuned uh, for my fourth episode. Now, meanwhile, if you have been entertained uh, by my travelogues and you have not subscribed, please do so. I will be much pleased. At the same time, right, please give me a thumb up and a like. And also share with your friends and family so that they can be like you. Travel the world virtually at the comfort of their home. So please stay safe and stay strong. And see you again in the coming episode. And in the coming episode, we will moving right further and into a new prefecture. That's called the Gawa Prefecture or they call it Abba Prefectures. So this will end our journey in the Gansi Prefectures in Western Sichuan. So Stay safe and stay strong and hope to see you again and bye.